<laughs> One time I was driving back and I was like, I want to see if I could get like fully naked in my car. And I take off all of my clothes and I'm driving fully naked for like about a couple miles. And I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Girls on Guys. I'm your host, Nana Tar, but you probably already know that. Today I got two people that are fantastic. They're comedians. They this is the intro they want me to write for them. Models, comedians, uh, <laughs> auteurs. They're both cool and hot, and they're best friends and they're roommates. <laughs> I want to introduce first uh Logan Gunzelman. Hello. Logan is a really funny comedian, uh, great stand-up comedian. She was uh awarded a, a new face at JFL, which is pretty themed. Uh, thing. Then we have the beautiful, the wonderful, very hilarious stand-up comedian, John Gamora. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. And they have a great show called Can It Soda Stream? And yeah. you guessed it, they put disgusting things in a soda stream and see what will happen. So, Yeah, we haven't... Um, I don't know if we've filmed an episode in like a calendar year, but it is something that we have done I together. It's been eight months. <laughs> Since the last one. The last Who, one. Like, it, it makes me think that you guys are both just like stoners to have a book. Like, Dude, can you fucking like, what if you put a number two pencil in a fucking soda stream? Do you think that one fucking soda stream? That's true of one of, one of us is high every time we make the uh, video. The other one is, is trying to make sure that there's no glare for the lights. I'm like setting up, I'm like lighting it like, as professionally as possible. And I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mean something i put my bong just out of camera but it was also we were just bored during the pan we moved in i moved into his place he took me in at the beginning of the pandemic and it was like we didn't really know each other we knew we we'd met like one time socially and then we were like well we're i guess the only people we're gonna hang out with for the foreseeable future it happens like that yeah it'd be like that you yeah know? And Will Will Stream has fully jumped the shark in yeah. uh, in a terrible way, where it's mm -hmm. no longer like we we did. I think our last one was Will Soda Stream Magic, yeah, which we were like, <laughs> we talked about. It. I was like, I rewatched it the other day. I was like, I laughed. It was, <laughs> we, we do they do they sponsor you? Can you get a sponsorship? No, because one of their biggest rules is don't put anything besides water in a Soda Stream, <laughs> and we broke that almost immediately. <laughs> yeah. So what was one that was actually good that you were surprised by? Uh, like, like, eggs was good. That, that was sounds a, fucked up. It well because we cooked it and it was a really so fluffy omelet. Mm -hmm. It was like a way to make a super fluffy omelet. Yeah. How many have you wine? We you honestly you name it. We've done we did gravy. We've done wine. We did milk. We did milk. We disgusting. We did carbonated milk. Is that's so that was the first wrong. one. That was it was it was wrong. That was the first one. It was wrong. Soup. You guys are like you guys are like defying gods. This is like a, surf and turf. We did surf and turf. That's the reason why we did butter is because we're like we need something to dunk the crab into. And that was really good. And you imagine going to a steakhouse or like a like a surf oh, and, and they turf have house fizzy and be, butter. being like yeah. like still or sparkling butter. That's actually really yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. now I'm back on board. Okay. No, if maybe you don't want to trust anything we've said so far based on what we've said so far, but. Sparkling butter is very good. Have you ever been to a one of those like gastro fucking pub places where they're like they have like foam fucking food? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Places like that. I had like one of the worst uh, experience. I went to like a five star fucking uh, restaurant with this, like, this guy I was dating, and we were like with his friends, and he said something like so cutting to me at the table in front of them, and I just had to be like. Okay, I'm gonna go to the restroom <laughs> and, uh, and then go to go the restroom, cry. and then I just like went into this like fucking like twenty thousand dollar bathroom, and it was like, <laughs> and then like went back, and I was like, hey, like f full Betty Draper moment, like everything's fine now. Oh, what is this? It's goat cheese that's uh, made into a, a mousse. <laughs> that's so cool. I love my life. Um, yeah. um, do you remember what he said, or is that like I don't in even a vault? remember? Yeah, it was so long ago. It was a very very long time. It was like. A my early 20s were like uh you just can't advocate for yourself so somebody will just say like you know what i really like about you you're just like not as attractive as a woman i'm normally used yeah. to dating <laughs> and that's why like you know so it's cool because i feel more at ease because i just feel like you know i don't really care as much so it's actually been really relaxing to date you and i'm like oh that's like positive yeah right? that's like a compliment <laughs> but i also am, sure. am realizing now all those really nice bathrooms at steakhouses the women's bathrooms, I feel like they're made so that women can go cry in them. Oh my God. Yeah, they have like a little stool. The little, little bench. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are, do you have benches in your bathrooms? No. Oh, we got a whole <laughs> setup. I would love to cry in a bathroom. <laughs> have you never cried in a bathroom? In public? No. Do you, you can call yourself a gay man and you've never cried never, in a bathroom. Never had a full breakdown. Wait, no. I have cried in 
so many bathrooms, especially at jobs that I like hated, like when I worked uh, in yes. retail or worked as a server and you go into the bathroom and like somebody just says something horrible to you. And yeah. You're like, I'll be right back. And then, or your boss says something. something and it's like three heaving sobs and then just like, <laughs> okay, yeah. like the, the hardest you've ever sobbed for one second no, and then no. you go back out. You fully make this face. You're like, yeah, like that. you're like I'm so ugly right now. Yeah. I couldn't be uglier. You you want to barf, but you're like I'm on the clock. Yeah, and you know at heart you know me I'm a capitalist, so uh, yeah. I yeah. gotta get back to work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I'm surprised you never cried in a bathroom. I've cried in so many bathrooms. In a walk-in fridge, yeah. Oh, you cried. In okay, a that's fridge. fair. Yeah, yeah. if you're in food way. service, that's the equivalent. Exactly, because I think I've worked the type of like server jobs where you had to like still in charge of like cleaning the bathroom, so I like avoided like the plague. <laughs> but like you go into the walk-in uh, fridge, you're standing behind like the towers of like macaroni. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> now, did you cry because of something um, your uh, boss said to you or something that a customer said to you? A customer. I feel like one time I was like 18 working at this like fancy patisserie and I was like, they're like, okay, now you just have to like serve people wine. And I was like, okay, and somebody ordered some red and they like poured it for them and like, why is it cold? And I'm like, that not, made you cry? No, I'm like, I'm not even like 21. And they were just like ripped into me for like all of this wine stuff that I'm like, I You're like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do wrong? And they were just like laid into me. And I've had people like truly like treat me like a whipping boy at like these type of serving jobs where they're just like, like asking the world of you. Like I had to like decorate all of these like fancy French. He brought in a tray and was like, can you decorate all of these like macaron and tarts and like little cakes. You think I am fucking Martha the... Stewart? And yeah. I said there and I was like moving and then he was like, okay, now switch that one with that one, trying to like color coordinate it. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna get like a mean tip. I'm gonna get a mean tip. And then I like, okay, now bring it around so I can like take a nice picture. He's like, can you turn up the lights a little bit? And I'm sitting there for like 25 minutes, like right before closing, trying to like get this guy like the best shot of his fucking dessert platter. And then he's like, all right, box it up. And he like snaps at me. And so I'm like going to like box it up. And he like, it was like $300 worth of like French desserts. And then he uh, puts a zero through the tip and strikes it. <sighs> and I go there and I'm like putting it in the box and it's all these little macarons and I press down on each, I break every <laughs> single macaron. <laughs> so that when they pick it up, it just like crumbles in his hands. I did not give it, there was like a Yelp review that was like, this person threw a cookie at me. And I was like, that is not fair. I tossed it. <laughs> I remember when I, I worked as a, a server at the improv for a long time. And I've always, I, as shitty as service jobs are, which it was still shitty, you were never required to be nice to people, which is something I liked about it. Cause it's in the dark. So you go up and whisper like, what the fuck do you want? Mm -hmm. And get it. And like, they're not expecting you to be like, is everything okay? It's like shitty food and shitty alcohol at a comedy club. So it was fine. But one time, one guy, we were like, you know, at the end of the day, you go through all your receipts to like, see what your tips are. And he, on the tip line, someone just wrote, nah. And then <laughs> gave him no tip. And... That's bad, but I was also like, this is funny to watch because it's not me, just him realizing that it it was zero. I like, nothing. No, I like the a verbal response. Yeah. Um, all right, should we get into some of these uh, things that people have asked or want us to talk about? Sometimes people will write in uh, advice and stuff like that that they want, mm. which is so funny because it's like, how crazy you gotta be to be like, comedians, please be gentle. I'm like, we won't. Um, yeah, no. Okay, this one's pretty crazy. How would you react to someone telling you that they have chlamydia in the middle of sex? Can I ask? Well, I know you might not have the answer there, but are you are is there a condom being used or are we assuming this is an unprotected? Oh, wow. Great question. Yeah. If it's unprotected, I feel like you you're just like, well, yeah, you are you're already doing it. I mean, look, I don't want to be I don't want you guys sound kind of like pansies because chlamydia, you know. That's not I've uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a twice. twice. I've had it twice. Yeah, I'm sort of like twice. that you one's clown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clown. You know how like no clowns are like into orgies. That's why they all like getting out of that car at once. You know what I mean? They might as well be in a fucking orgy dome at Burning Man together. Uh, <laughs> I think chlamydia is not that bad of an STD because you just take one pill and it's a one. Yeah, I'm more like that one. I'm. It speaks to me more of that. Like, I don't know if I want to see that person again, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to stop having sex with them in that. I'd be like, we're already having sex, but like, see, that's what I I, I'm like, you're kind of, too. yeah, you're concealing something from me. We've already run the risk of this in this moment, but just mental note, I'm probably not going to call this person again unless they're super hot 
and it's a really good time and we both just go get it cured together as an activity. Yeah. That seems like a really great romp, like a yeah. really good outing. How, how do you like, how would that even come up? Cause it's like while it's during sex. Yeah, they're just like, oh, I have chlamydia. Yeah, it's like, like dirty talk. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he just thought it was dirty. Maybe. It was yeah, just... you're so filthy. Yeah. You probably have the chlamydia that I also have yeah. right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. It's, I think it's like an interesting thing to like, be posed as a question. It's like, what would you do if somebody had an STD? Which this is like a little bit more like violating, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, someone's like inside of you. Yeah. You're like, great. <laughs> like, like you like don't know how to advocate for yourself. You're like, okay, well let me know when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. I figured actually, cause you are a bar back. Um, <laughs> but that's like totally, so I should have known. Um, you're totally right. But I, I also agree with you that like, if I'm using a condom, I might be more likely to be like, hey, stop. Cause I've gone far enough to be safe that I want to be like more safe. If I'm already make, if I'm already raw dogging this You're person, it's like I already just accepted that this might <laughs> yeah. occur. So let's just keep it going. Let's just try. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, ra yeah, it's funny though. It's so hard to stop sex once it's happening though. So it's like, yeah. even if you had, uh, if you were using a condom and that were to happen, then it would just be like, okay, now stop actually and don't try it anymore <laughs> yeah <laughs> now we'll just not we'll just, now we're gonna have a conversation we're gonna leave yeah. this place <laughs> like, we're gonna Basically. go into the fridge walk-in for a second <laughs> yeah. right back. oh man how many times has this happened to me in this job <laughs> you ever masturbated at work no i've never masturbated at work i masturbated in the car once yeah, I've masturbated in the car once. I masturbated in the car a, a lot. My friend masturbated in the car because she was driving like a far far distance and she was like, I was going to fall asleep. And so, so I like her? masturbated oh. to kind of keep, yeah. I masturbated in the car because I was just bored. Yeah, it was like driving back from, San I was in Sacramento, driving back from San Francisco. It's like a 90 minute drive. I need something <laughs> to keep to, myself. To do? One time I was like it's driving. like not even a long drive. <laughs> <laughs> 90 minutes for me, I was like, I was like. He was I moving his car for street cleaning. And he just had to <laughs> <laughs> I just need something to do. It's like eight <laughs> like, it's about time. But one time I was driving back and I was like, I want to see if I could get like fully naked in my car and I take off all of my clothes and I'm driving fully naked for like about a couple miles and I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be fun. That's kind of dangerous, I feel like. I feel like you look over, you just see a person without a shirt, you're like, okay, but then you're like, little do you know. That's It's funny because I, I too have experimentally driven naked just to see how it felt. And then a truck was driving next to me and I was like, it doesn't feel good. Anymore. <laughs> there's like they're higher up. Yeah, they're higher up. Oh no. Hi. But I, I was I'm pussy out driven. I think yeah. I said that. Like yeah. I was like changing and then I was like, let's hang out for a little. I think <laughs> I just like see how it feels. feels. I think I've actually done that as well. Just kind of like sit in my own pussy soup and be yeah. like, when you have, you have well, I was about to be like, so you have a leather interior. Yeah, you know what I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also that's not that I think it's a great idea, but I did feel very awake while I was doing it. So besides masturbating, maybe just Driving naked is a good, like if you're falling asleep on a long drive, you yeah. take a shirt off, pants off. Yeah, high risk behavior. Yeah, exactly. you know? Adrenaline. That's the funny thing about being horny, and I, I feel like men probably have this experience so much more because of like the, you have more testosterone usually in general. Uh, just how sometimes you can be so horny that it feels like painful in a way. We're like, yeah. I, I, I think the only reason I masturbated while driving is because I was like, I'm so horny that like, I'm gonna crash my car. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm oh. freaky, I'm fucking wiling out right now. <laughs> There's something going on with me. I don't know what's happening. I'm always impressed when people can like masturbate, like with guys like multiple times in a day where they're like, yeah, sometimes I do like they, four times. Are you kidding? No, guys will do it like 20 times in a day. I'm like one time a day and done. One and done. One and done. Like I after I've like one time I was hooking up with somebody other like we were like we'll keep going. I was like I physically can't. You're, like, you're actually gross now. But also, <laughs> you make me you, sick. You serve no purpose. A little too much TMI, but I'm like I like get it. I like come so much. <laughs> <laughs> like it's funny that this is something that I I do just know about you. you. Just know we've about had this. What's the metric? Oh my god! If we're talking about like cups, yeah, like a quart, like a quart. <laughs> well, I need to look at the the conversion rate. Yeah, yeah. This is an American mm -hmm. podcast, metric. so we don't use the metric system. <laughs> but like that, tablespoons of cum, you think? Yeah, and it was like it's like a thing where it's like, oh yeah, people are like, oh okay. And I'm like, yeah, I get it all out 
one and done. <laughs> That's what when you did it on the ninety minute drive, it was like ten minutes jerking off, eighty minutes of cleaning up. Cleaning was basically up. what it was. Yeah. It okay. Was, like it was like I gotta get my car detailed. <laughs> yeah. Well, is it like the scene in Pulp Fiction where he actually shoots the guy's head off in the back seat? Like, come, you're like, God damn, this is everywhere. <laughs> Someone driving behind you is like, I think like a glue bottle just exploded in that car. <laughs> Somebody so just crazy. popped glue gun out the window. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've masturbated many times in a day, but that's because like. I don't know. You ever just masturbate because you're hungover and you're just like, I and it makes you feel better. Well, you got to get out. I used to have a, I have a weird where like coming once makes me sleepy. Coming twice wakes me up. (laughs) Coming three times. I I usually say one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready. And here we go. So usually when I do one, I'm like, we're going to do two. We got to do two more. Just maybe I have OCD, but just about (laughs) masturbating when I have to get out. One, two, three, four, five, six. But, but it's also like, it's so quick when you're doing it yourself. It's not like oh, it's yeah. most of them in my head. They're like maintenance comes. Is how I like yeah, yeah, do you yeah, know yeah. I, just to like in your oil not track. feel crazy horny so that I'm engaging in risky so behavior. Serotonin just kind of like kind yeah. of clearing out goes the pipes into my brain a little bit, so I don't yeah. want to like jump off a building. That's kind of my yeah. whole thing where I'm yeah. just like I gotta. I feel like this just yearning regret of living and just like this life is so terrible. I get so existential and then I'm like, this had to come. Yeah. I'm actually all good now. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, all right, I can go to work now. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. I have another question for you guys because mm-hmm. I've had experiences with this. Um, okay. Any experience with having to kick someone out after a one night stand who didn't get the clue? Mm. Because I got a tactic that worked. Oh, your tactic is always like you like to. Go I go there. to their place always so mm-hmm. that I control when I get to leave. Because she knows that I'll try to just talk to them. Oh my God. <laughs> about about what? Hey. <laughs> What's your favorite flavor of tea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making matcha. You guys want some? <laughs> you have talked to, but it's always been people I was like kind of seeing. Have you heard each other have sex? We're at opposite ends of the apartment, which is honestly a godsend. It is a godsend. It's like sometimes like a good layout has like a bedroom and then the bathroom and then the other bedroom. So there's like a buffer like wall. Me and Lori's place. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's like there's like a little bit of buffer, but ours are complete. And we have a TV in the living room, which often, at least I've done, I've left that on and left just the playing TV like, in my room. Just playing anything. Kitchen Nightmare or something. Yeah. So just yeah. Gordon Ramsay yelling and then uh, you'd be like, fuck. I actually I put on hardcore porn, so it makes it confusing what's happening in it's my like room. Cacophony of bones, yeah. and you're like, oh, I don't know who, which one's Logan. But which one's... I, you're a notoriously quiet comer. So yeah, just you like, are. Oh, no. oh it's God. quiet and it's a lot. That's what you need to know. Oh my God, you're like but, an assassin. But I also like I most of the time have always gone to their place. Like I have hooked up at our apartment, but honestly, not that much because I usually just go. Somewhere. What if it, see that means that you're dating guys that actually have like viable places? I've dated guys that I'm like, they. Li- I've literally dated a guy who didn't have sheets on his mattress. Oh, I like didn't own sheets. So I'm like, we can't fuck at your place. I'm gonna like this is like a d- health hazard. You know, this is bad. This is like it's like fucking on a New York City subway. I can't do this. Oh my God. You know, yeah. I just have. I think it's more. I was like, well, that's. I have like lower. I was like hooking up with a guy who lived in a garage for a while. I keep, I kept. Sounds like my type. I I kept (laughs) hooking up with guys who did not have access to a A bathroom. bathroom. You had to do, it was a whole production to get to, and it kept happening. I was like, how does this keep happening that I'm either like multiple guys outside in the dead of night, I'm pissing against the wall just because I'm like, I don't want to go through their fucking house and deal with their roommates that they definitely have. Oh. Now my, the, my, Current boyfriend has a bathroom and his place is like wow. He's like a one. cute, yeah. Mm. He's got a yeah. I he saw has that indoor plumbing. Yeah, <laughs> ladies, pretty huge. <laughs> no more peeing on the side of the wall. Um, I want to wait, but so yeah. Sometimes it's just fun. You write your name in cursive. <laughs> you know? And yeah, peeing outside is free freeing. Uh, uh, wait, so what? What was it? Oh, okay, the, basically any experience in kicking somebody oh. out. I did something real tricky, dicky once, which I think is pretty good advice actually. So what I had to do is. Cause I was double dipping. It was yeah. a bad. Like I was. It was so when I was single. I was dating a lot of people, and I was gonna have brunch. I like had like a one night stand with this guy, and so like I didn't expect to have company that night. And then he slept over, and then we like went to go get. Like I was like, oh, let's like be able to leave. This was in New York too, like years ago. And I was like, okay, how do I get him out? And I was like, oh, we could be like, let's get coffee. And then he really insisted on walking me back to my apartment. And but this other guy was gonna meet me at my apartment, to, like, Ooh. so we could go to brunch. Very scary situation. So then I just was like, 
uh, I, I was like, listen, I'm a little embarrassed right now, but uh, I don't really want you to walk me home because I have like, uh, I feel like I'm gonna have really bad diarrhea right now and I just need to go. And he's like, oh, for sure. But that actually, I forgot, that's a totally different story. <laughs> that was a totally, uh, no, getting a guy out, uh, I've done a fake leave. Yeah. You fake leave. You, you fake go, leave I gotta go. I gotta wake up. You're like, ah, I gotta go the fucking Kashko or whatever. You gotta you gotta go somewhere. So you get in your car. I mean, I did this when I lived in LA. I literally got into my car. I was like, I gotta go. So then we walk out of my apartment together. I get in my car. I literally drive around the block. <laughs> and then just go right And back. then I go right back into my fucking carport and then go back into my apartment. I've done that. That's a good way to get them out. Well, see... I think that's so crazy to me because even like just personal friends or like I've had that too where it's like you're like oh you you can tell when someone is like they either want you gone or they like they like a lot of people are not self aware but they just say be like be like oh, I really should start my day and then yeah and like, then that's... then it's just like then they're like they just keep talking and they just keep like they're just hanging out like oh cool yeah and don't, don't worry about it and it's like. How do you? How That's do you, a young person. I feel like who doesn't understand that like there's like you kind of need that space to yourself. I think like you know I can't I can't wrap my head around it. It's like like right people aren't self aware, but then it's like you can have people in your life that you're like oh yeah they're like completely normal in everything except for when it comes to just like getting the fuck out. <laughs> well, I mean this <laughs> they is don't why know when to leave. I'm sure you guys are friends with some people that you're like this person's a fun friend and they're great, but then like I would never recommend them to date anybody cuz they're out of their fucking mind. Yeah, so many people. <laughs> but yeah. I also sometimes if this is sort of the reverse where if you don't want to spend the night after a one night stand or a date, which sometimes I know it's like sort of an expected part of things, but maybe you want to go home. I've used before, and this isn't a good excuse, but it also lets them know that you don't like them a lot, is one time at like four in the morning, I was like, I got to go prep for an early morning podcast, is what I told them, was my like insane excuse for leaving. It's like too much of a lie. But know? also, but it's like, that was a situation where I wanted to also let them know, like, I wanted it to be so obvious that they didn't think that things were going to, can like, if you want to get out and sort of just cut it off mm -hmm. after the experience... If you give them a lie that like even someone who's not self-aware at all would like and even if they're in your home, if you give some it depends on what you like. Do you want to see them again? But you want them out versus like you just want to end like you can, you can act differently depending on what your goal is in this getting them out of your space. Scenario. Yeah, I think guys in general because I'm I feel like to uh, not even to a fault, but like when I was single, I would definitely be like he hates me i have to leave like it would be an yeah. immediate like i would want to leave because it was the idea to me of being a burden in any way shape or yes. form to somebody and and even just violating them even though that might be like a strong term in their space is like i gotta get the fuck out of here I unless gotta, they were like stay. i want you to yes. sleep over i would be like i'm gonna go yeah. Yes. Just or if it's late, and usually they'll like mention something, or even like in the morning, let's say I do sleep over, I'll kind of like bounce. I'll be like, okay, well, I'm going to get out of here. And they're like, oh, do you want coffee? Do you want to stay for a little bit? Then I'll stay. But if they don't say, fuck it, I'm, I'm just like, if we wake up, I'm like, you're, goodbye. you're out. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Even if I really like the person, if if I actually really like the person, even more so. Because you definitely don't want to feel like you're clingy. You're like, or... Yeah, that you're like, I'm cool. I'm good. I'm going to yeah. go get my own coffee. Yeah. I also, the other thing for me, is we have an espresso machine, which has been a game changer in my life. And there are times where even when I'm enjoying myself and having a good time, I'm like, I got to go home because you don't have an espresso machine and I do. <laughs> and I don't think I'm better than you, but my coffee's better than yours and I need to go make one. I, I think that the sometimes being single is like fun and then other times it can be just this fucking matrix of a nightmare. Oh, An just absolute mind fuck, right? <laughs> like you're, you guys were just sitting there being like, if I, especially if I like the person, I'm out of there seven forty five in the morning <laughs> yeah, on yeah. a Sunday, yeah. and I'm in my car peeling out, and it's like that can create like a thing where you're like, unless they're like asking me to stay, but then if they, what if why didn't they ask me to stay? The anxiety that one has while they're single is like I com I totally empathize with because mm -hmm. I would have that. We're like, does this person like me or do they like literally don't care if I'm dead or alive? <laughs> yeah. yeah, sometimes I'm like leaving a place, leaving a hookup after like two in the afternoon. I'm like slamming my head against. The I stayed way too long. I stayed way too long. Yes. I was like, duh. <laughs> no, I know. Where I'm like, why did I 
fucking say that. It's yeah. just too fucking polite to yeah. even like kick me out. And there I was. I drank two cups of coffee. I drank two cups of fucking cups. Of, I would need to take a shit so bad right now. <laughs> I know. I've like had the amount of just anxiety coursing through me of regret that I've had on dates or something where I'm just like, why the fuck did I do that? And it's just, they don't even give a shit. Yeah. Also, I've heard from dudes that they're like honestly like if you like somebody you just like them there's not little slights that they'll make that make you not like them like if they make yeah. a little fumble or something like I think we a lot of times we think it's just make or break our behavior can be mm -hmm. so make or break and it's really not like if someone and likes it's like you, if like and if you. and if that's the case then that's not a relationship well, then they don't really like you to la like if it's contingent upon any small thing yeah like yeah, it's not gonna unless work well out. this this uh here's another one that actually mm -hmm. kind of reminds me of this well a little bit but uh okay someone's sense of style gives you the ick can you move past it and date I struggle with this sweetheart this is mine comp as well I get that <laughs> uh, <laughs> I understand that uh. Yeah, I feel like, because I mean, I only relate those two. Um, it sounds like non sequiturs, but I relate those two just because uh, I think that can be a very little thing that you can kind of. If you supersede. really, if you really like someone, I think it might not bother you as much. But also, I can see like having a hard time getting past getting to know someone because even if they're really they're wearing a vest, you, with a you're looking at their outfit and you're just like, what it what. What are you, what's happening? I right saw now? a man, I saw a man unapologetically wear a vest yesterday. I was at a valet and he was wearing like light jeans and a vest. Not a valet like, though, right? Because the vest is a confusing. It was confusing. Thank you. I was, I was also confused. <laughs> my keys. <laughs> <laughs> Stole my car. <laughs> um, you honestly should have been like, so where do you, are you going to take these? And be like, I'm sorry, the vest can, yeah. maybe he would never wear it again. The most appalling thing is that he was with a woman who was very attractive. And it was like, they better not be fucking. If, the, if they're fucking, she better have a, a horrible personality. She but better it's be racist. I, if they're fucking. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that happens so often where you'll see like, a, like a almost too hot of a woman with the worst looking guy. And I don't just mean like that he's ugly and that's what I'm judging him on, but like he wears the flashiest, grossest designer clothes, but is in like sweats or is like two feet shorter than her and is older <laughs> than her. Than and her. is like, how does this happen? I think that may be an interesting thing, right? Cause you can talk about like somebody's style and you can like overlook it. Right. And especially like when women like date a guy or they're like, Oh, so like, We've been working on his style. We've been getting him into better clothes. And I think these types of women protect themselves in a way that it's like, they're like, whatever he's going to wear is going to be his problem because it's like, have everybody break up and, you know, and then he's like dressing better and takes care of himself <sighs> and uses a fucking serum. And then she's like, I did that. I made him. So she's like, Nope, he's gonna stay exactly. Every woman how he is. is like an HGTV show. Like, <laughs> oh wow, this was a fucking haunted place that had literally no indoor plumbing, and now look at it. It's fucking gorgeous, and the resale value is higher. And it's so they funny. Your fridge. I feel like I'll like be at war with myself in my head, not wanting to be like a naggy girlfriend or being like, mm -hmm. is this a pet peeve of mine, but it's not an actual thing. And I actually yesterday I had this whole fight in my head because I got to my boyfriend's apartment and he had, and he's a, a wonderful man, human being, but he had a used tire on his bed. What? Like on his bedspread. It was a bike tire that was like, he was meaning to replace, but he was moving shit around his room and like, just being a boy, sometimes you guys will just like don't care. Like he just like threw it to the side, but the closest place was his bed. And I was in my head for five minutes being like, I don't want to be a naggy girlfriend. And I was like, it's a tire on a bed. I'm going to say don't put your How tires long have on you the bed. you guys been together? Like a year and a half. Okay. And yeah. he immediately like, and he like anytime, and this has gone both ways where, and this is a nice thing where. I'm willing to be like, I was wrong, I'm sorry. And he immediately will be like, yeah, okay, that I probably shouldn't put it. Like, he wasn't like, that's not that weird. Like, he was like, yeah, it's pretty weird to have done this. <laughs> put a tire. I mean, people have problems with, like, outside shoes on the yeah, bed. Yeah, and I think that's it's fucked disgusting. up. Yeah, that's fucked up. Which, and, but I don't I'm, like outside clothes on a bed. Yeah. Like, like, on the comforter, okay, inside the bed, what are you doing? Which, and it was on top of the comforter. It wasn't like, but I was still just, and he had, it was clean, but I was still like, hey, maybe... No tires. I, I was like, I don't want to be a, a bitchy girlfriend with rules, but maybe we don't put tires on the bed. 
was like, I, yeah. will, I will do the, my best to meet my yeah. end. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm not being judgmental. How about we both do this? Yeah. I was like, I, I won't. It's together. actually yes. not just about, it's actually for both of us. It's so for both of us. When you come over, I won't have tires on my back. So yeah. how about that? It's actually equal. You see what that is? Um, I see, I can be very, the okay, I have data guys that have mm -hmm. uh, no sense of style. Because I go for, to me, it's like personality is pretty much number one. Mm -hmm. Like they got to be like funny uh, and like fun and like, you know, smart and stuff. So, and, I, and a lot of times it's a passion project, you know, and you can really, you can dress a man. You can be like, hey, so um, I just want you to know that when you wear those shorts, they make me not want to fuck you. And that is a good motivator. It's a really good motivator. Also, I'll just tell my boyfriend, like if he's wearing something, I'm like, you got to change. Like I'll just yeah. say it's very shorthand where I'm like, you can't you can't wear a hat. And yeah. He's like, come on. I'm like, just no, we're not we're going to like a nice restaurant. You can't wear that. And he's like, all right, you know, but in general, and I'm lucky now because I'm dating somebody who actually has pretty good style. Um, but it'll just sometimes it'll be like a little more casual. That's kind of when it's yeah. not appropriate to be that casual. But I've dated guys like I was with a guy for years who like dressed bad. And then mm -hmm. I was like, you know what would be fun? And this was after being together for like a year. But I'd be like, you know what would be fun is if we went like shopping. You probably mm -hmm. want, because some guys are into shopping. Uh, some dudes, I, I've most in my experience, a lot of them have not been. And if you're like, this is something that I can, it's like a service you're offering them. Like, I'm going to help you. And also things. like hyping them up of like when they try something on. Like anytime you go shopping with a friend or like especially if it's a, gay gentleman friend and they go oh I love that on you or they tell you like that looks bad like having someone who looks at you and tells you what looks good and bad is like if you've never had that which I feel like a lot of straight guys don't which I will also say too my this is my boyfriend now dresses better than I do which I've never been I'm not like you guys dress cool I love Target so <laughs> but so it's a thing where I'll be asking him and I don't know if maybe the person that you're interested in that doesn't have good style, like if you give them positive reinforcement once of like when you really like something, maybe they might get more in the habit of asking you. Like yeah. if you really go above and beyond being like, I love how you look in that, then they might crave that attention and there's some non-negotiables though. I have like, there's some things yeah. where I'm completely fucking blind to, like I would be blind to somebody's attractiveness because of what they're wearing. Does if that it, make sense? Like if you're yeah. wearing, you if you're are, wearing flip flops, I if you're, were, if that. you're a man, that's, a, that was the only, my, if you're wearing flip flops, if you're wearing flip -flops mm -hmm. you could be the hottest man on the face of the earth. And that, I'm like, you are unfuckable. There are multiple Can't. times I have like checked out a man, like I going like, oh, Terminator vision, face, scanning, like going yeah. down and then you see their feet and you go, oh, my God, it's startling. Yeah. People are shocked for me when I'm like when I'm like, oh, the first thing I notice about people is their shoes. And people are like, what do you that's mean? how every I think that's very common. Actually. I'm like, go bottom up because it's like if you look down and you see like a really, really shitty pair of like driving loafers and yeah. you're like, you're like, oh, I'm out. And it's like, you don't even need to like. And for that, I'm out. That's yeah. how I, I <laughs> Oh, the approach. sharks, like, like real, like it's a real thing. And people are like, wait, why? It's like, it's like, cause he's like, shoes are such an incredible indicator of like what somebody like, like what their fashion sense actually is. Because a pair of jeans, you can sort of get away with like mm. a target pair of jeans. And it's like, oh, they fit you nice. Yeah, I'll go as far to say that I, I would even prefer you wear cargo shorts than fucking flip flops. Yeah. Like, exactly. and I never understand. And it's so funny. I don't know what this is because I've made comments about how I'm very anti flip flop. And men, I don't know what the fuck it is. They get, they act as though you are taking away their right to vote or something yeah, like they that. So they freak upset. out. They're like, you're ugly though. <laughs> fuck you. I don't like you. And like, wait, like, okay, so you're a sub four and you're going to fucking tell me that I can't wear fucking flip flops. And they freak out. And you're like, this dude, I just, it's fine. You can wear them. I just, I'm not going to fuck you. This is what you get like, for dating what? in Newport Beach. <laughs> Which, and I also, I might go as far as to say, and this, you guys might disagree, but any man wearing any form of sandal at night, I'm like, I no. will say this, gay man, you're allowed to wear like a nice, like a uh, sandal that you got, like in Ibiza. Like that's, oh, you know what I'm saying? Nice it's about the leather, woman. Like a, story. Like a, it's a sandal with a story. It's a I gotcha. Yeah. A, like, yeah, I, that's I yeah. used to wear that. It was the type of thing where you're right. Like, it's like, there's a certain time where it's like when night falls and I'm like in like even a pair of like Birkenstock or like sandals, I'm like, 
It's like you turn into a pumpkin, but instead you just yeah. turn into an unfuckable person wearing ugly ass shoes. Yeah, and it's like, look, when guys are like, "What if I'm at the beach? Wear slides. Just wear slides." Yeah, like I, I, if, if you're you, next to, if you're by a pool or like a fucking yeah, it's fine. The thing in your toes, just I don't like there's that. something about you wearing a thong shoe that slaps up on your foot as you walk. I don't like that. And also the fact that like some of them will wear it when they go out and they'll wear full jeans. Yes. With like rainbow sandals. Th they'll what wear, is they'll wrong? wear designer jeans. And then when you get to the bottom, it, it maybe it's rainbow or it'll be like rubber sand like Havana's. Like, or yes. Whatever. It's like it's like gym shower like yes. flip flops. What is that? And it's like they're like, it's comfortable. I'm like, you it's not comfortable. You know what's so comfortable? Like, I'd rather you wear, like, the most, like, virginal fucking pair of New Balances. You know? Just, like, yeah. cover your foot. I don't care, like, if your tennis shoes are hideous. I mean, I kind of do. But, like, I would say... I would take that over a flip-flop any day. Yeah, but also, you know, it's even worse than a flip-flop. Those fucking weird toe shoes. That is That's worse. like, you never have... You never fuck. Please tell me where you're finding these people. <laughs> I mean, you see them on the street. They're like I'm, the type of people that like they're in a fucking urban city and they walk with a walking stick. And you're yeah. like, what is wrong with? And you, they're dude? wearing one of those hats that have like <laughs> that they like, look fold like into a, a like tent. A, yeah, like a safari hat. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they are richer than your wildest dreams. Yes, yeah, it's so crazy. <laughs> you know, because that's what you earn when you are that rich. Or like, I'm like, these guys got to have big old hogs, right? Because yes. they just are so confident, like this blind confidence that just yeah. allows them to kind of walk through the world and not give a fuck about what they're, yeah. you know, some, like you can tell a guy has a big dick because he's very like nonplussed by things. You know what I mean? I'm like, why are you so confident? You kind of seem like your life's not really together. And then they'll just they'll be like, just, oh. that's the only, or I also, I'm like, maybe they want these comfortable types of footwear like sandals and those toe shoes because their back's all thrown out because their fucking hog is so huge. <laughs> and that's why they're mad. It's is they're like, how dare you tell me I can't wear what protects my feet from the weight of my massive. Yeah, it's the equivalent like like a woman wearing like an ugly bra, but at least like that's a yeah. cover up. That's like a utilitarian item, whereas like these fucking ugly ass shoes, I'm like, this is like seems like it's hindering Which, your capability. And I will also say, I don't like it when women wear flip flops. I it, I pay attention to it less because I'm not trying to fuck them. Yeah. But like it just always seems like you were running out the door and forgot to change yeah. your shoes. It's a lot. It feels like last minute. Actually, this yeah. this kind of reminds me. Somebody asked this because we're talking about kind of double standards between men and women, and I thought this was pretty interesting. Okay, in apps, women identifying people saying kind of a size queen is that equivalent to no fat chicks? Oh. So there, wait, so there are women on dating apps who say that they're a size queen to let guys on dating apps know if they got a little ween. Not to, get yeah, out of there. step aside. Interesting. I've never seen even like the, the, the like gay space being like somebody who's like, your dick better be fucking huge. <laughs> I've had people DM me after being like, "Is are you hung? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. I am not. Female. And for that, I'm out. <laughs> for that, no. Like, you have like, I've never seen that type of thing where it's like somebody in like, uh, in their little like, Mm -hmm. questionnaire being like one thing you know about me is that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 well yeah. but also something that's always been kind of a like a cognitive disconnect or whatever with dating apps is like depending on the app you're kind of allowing yourself to be as brutal as possible in terms of what you want mm -hmm. yeah and to also allow other where it's like it sucks but if a guy is really a big enough piece of shit that he truly thinks no fat chicks no woman is going to convince him otherwise. If a girl truly is a size, like a size queen, it's like some sort of like, that's kind of what we're- but Do you think it's fine that if, if a guy says that, like no fat chicks, is that fine if a man says that? And is that fine if a woman says, uh, you know, pretty I much if that, you don't have a big dick, don't fucking talk to me. I mean, I think they're both bad, but I also like those people are being shitty, but they, it's also just- them acknowledging like I thought this was the place where I was pursuing a sexual partner and could be blatant about Brutal, my yeah, wishes honest. which doesn't make it okay or or better but when people do that in a space that they only think possible sexual partners are going to see it I'm always sort of like well yeah this is a piece of shit who came on a dating app like th yeah. this is but like I think both are bad but the people who say no fat chicks and the size queen should just fuck each other and then the people yeah, but what about the chicks have small dicks? That's that what I was true. thinking. And I feel that like it's true. kind of incongruent. It's incompatible. I think that the, some people can be, because I think also, I would throw this into the mix, when people say, like, six foot or taller, 
And I think that's pretty fucked up. I never understood like the heightism thing. I just no. don't because I think that to me, being a tra- like it's like I don't know. I just feel like you, being attractive. It doesn't matter. I mean, like yes, if you're like significantly shorter than me, I'm probably not going to be super into it. But that's just because I don't want to feel like a fucking gigantic person. Yeah. I just don't want to feel huge uh, as a as a lady. That's a personal preference. But. Uh, I've never been like he has to be over six feet tall I, ever and like chicks will fucking say that to the point where like in men's bios and I'm sure you've seen it too in men's bios where they'll say uh, like over six foot or like yeah that's the two. first thing that they list I'm six yeah. two yeah and you're like yeah you look like a great Dane fucking you look like a child wished upon a great Dane to become a fucking man you look disgusting bro just because you're six three doesn't mean yeah it's you're like hot. and I'm also like if that's the only thing you care about but then I'm like if these people are just looking to fuck maybe that's why they're being more specific i never i'm always like if the if all you're caring about is physical traits this is you're not going to find someone that you really care about because you might end up really liking someone that's under six feet you have no idea like it's sort of like if this is all they're listing to begin with yeah they don't seem like someone who's looking for an emotional it's, connection it's an yeah. interesting thing because you have like all these types of dating apps especially in the straight world it's like you just have like sort of like one singular thing within the gay world it's like they get like as like anisha is being like this is how far the dick is from you right now this instant and i've had like <laughs> yeah it's like dick proximity with dick gay dating proximity. apps yeah so it's like you guys have them all shuffled into one where it's like all of these like shallow experiences being like six foot or tall or like these types mm-hmm. of things because like, they're just looking for hookups and then you have people going on these tirades but like how awful is this and it's like well that's because it's like you guys have every single person which is like 90 percent of the population all in the same thing all looking for something different at the exact same time and you have to sort through all so of as opposed that. to different apps it's like you're sorting through it with your with- requirements well like a lot of gay dating apps well not everyone but it's like like sniffies for example it's like it's a kind of it's an app for manly men that like manly men so it's like very like and it's like grinder can i kind of can i ask is there an app Mm -hmm. and we would if it doesn't exist i'm inventing it right now and we have a very intense vetting process big dicks only you get the size queens on there but you gotta you gotta submit a photo of your penis to get in here wow that's kind of I'm more like, of like a date. I feel like that's like a. Is that just J date? Dating. Date. <laughs> it honestly, based on my experience, yes. It's just J date. <laughs> <laughs> We're chosen for a reason. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, that could work, I guess, but it's like, because I mean, not every chick is also into that either. You know? Which, but then it's like, so then the ones that claim to be this can go on. It's just sort of, I think that you're. The future is just more specific apps that allow the people who say these shitty things. They don't even have to say it because the app is like, this is an app for. Well, I think this that's thing, that's what people thing. want, like more kind of artisanal dating experiences where they're like going to seek out actual matchmakers. Now they have like people that actually mm-hmm. are like, okay, what are you into? Like, let me profile this person. It's a fucking nightmare, man, out there. I just like it's so. I was briefly on a dating app, and uh, I mean, I actually had like not too horrible experiences but it's um it just it does feel really shallow and you feel really empty and i think it's uh it's kind of like the way people are into like cyberbullying it's very easy when you're hiding behind a keyboard and mm-hmm. you're talking to somebody who you don't even really feel as a full-fledged human being yeah i think the same goes for dating apps where you're like oh this is like a fucking avatar essentially it yeah. doesn't yeah. even matter they might as well be a fucking character on Wii. Yeah. it yeah. doesn't like they're they're nothing and so there's that's why it's kind of crazy to me when um, I really recommend people to not invest into people uh, that they are only communicating through on an app unless it moves forward That's into a- an actual communication with uh, texting or a phone call or actually meeting in person. Yeah. Just because I'll have friends that are like, we were like chatting on the app for so long. I'm like, and it stayed within the app for a fucking reason because yes. they didn't want to graduate. Yeah. You know? And like, I don't know why they stopped replying. And I was like, why are you sharing? This is like talking about a dream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like it doesn't need, but I'm always like, you have like a weak window reasonably where if you, if you don't move the conversation to either planning to meet or do it like, yeah. If you don't move beyond just talking in the app, it's like I don't want a fucking pen pal. No, I and don't then want it's it. and then then it's suspect that I'm like maybe the reason why they're 
having it within the app is because perhaps they, they have a girlfriend or yeah, have a partner. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow. But or a wife. Or yes. a husband. Yeah. No, seriously. All three. Yeah. No, I, I, we talked about this. It's like, it is true. When you meet, match on a dating app, you have realistically like a week mm-hmm. because then it's like, let's just say you match on a Monday and you guys have a really good conversation on Wednesday. And then you guys are both busy this coming weekend. So they're like, let's plan something next week. So then are you just supposed to like talk on the dating app? Like, periodically every day I think that you shouldn't be able to talk. I think once you make the actual plan I think you talk yeah. this is what I think would be this is the kind of curve that I think is the best generally you talk communicate for a little bit on there you go back and forth you realize you know just to the point where like this person's not a fucking psychopath great mm. and then they ask or you ask let's meet up and then that should happen pretty soon and then you don't fucking talk until you meet up yeah. I hate that shit when a guy would like be like, great, so I'll see you on Friday. And then they're like, text you the next day. And they're like, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Yeah. And you're or like, like good, leave good, me the fuck alone. The good morning text, like when it's like, kill yourself. That, that <laughs> immediately I'm like, I don't, don't want to meet you. I don't want to meet you. Season three of Suits is great. Okay, <laughs> it is great. <laughs> Season three of Suits is great. Whoa. Season two is better. <laughs> wow, 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 wee, wee, wee. Yeah, they're just like, so what do you got going on today? I'm like, yeah. I don't even yeah, care how's what I got day, going on. How's your day going? I'm don't like, ever ask me how my day's going. Yeah. Don't ever ask. Don't I'm give like, me a rundown of your fucking day. It is the most boring thing. Like, so what'd you do today? I'm like, I don't, I don't even care what I did today. Why are you, yeah. why are we and fading this? Which, and I also too, like, I would even go quicker, which I I will admit I met my boyfriend on a dating app, but it was literally like we talked maybe a day and a half. Not a lot, but a little. He asked for my number. We talked a little bit more and he said, let's meet up. And I was like, great. And it was like the timeline of. That's so much better. And then we met and I was like, okay, he's not a crazy. Because also the other thing, too, where sometimes I would. I didn't go on a lot of dates from dating apps, but I would go on a couple because I was always like, this is a practice round for when I actually like the person, which sounds harsh for the other person, but just interacting with a stranger and talking about yourself in a non-crazy way in a situation that feels low stakes because you're not like crushing on them super hard so that when you actually go out with someone you like, you're like, I've done this before. Like, I know, like... That's the kind of, that is the catch-22 about Mm -hmm. dating apps is that you're like, I don't really care what this person thinks about me. And then they really like you because you're so fucking cool and casual mm-hmm. and shit. That is the worst. Yeah. Where you're like, I don't really care about this. And then because you have no interest, you just all of a sudden are like your best self because you're yeah. not trying so fucking hard. But when you really like somebody, you're like, <laughs> anyway, this good. So did you, did you grow up watching sports? <laughs> For sure, no, I didn't either. I think season two is better of Suits, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's really true. It's like a like a like a you go on a date with you're like, well, honey, like they're not the most attractive person I've seen, but like, why not? And you go on this, and then I have this like mental illness where I'm like, I want to be the most fucking charming person. This person, no, we're comedians. Ever- everyone is like, oh, and well, then you like, like the- and then they're like, hey, like, what's your number? Like, let's text, let's hang out again. I'm like. <laughs> You and want like, them to be no. obsessed with you, mm-hmm. but which, but also, <laughs> but that was something that as I like entered my late twenties and thirties, it was like a mind blowing thing to be like, oh, but what do I think about them? All I was trying to do was get what? them to like me. <laughs> yeah, no, it happens so much later where you're like, okay, okay, okay. So what? So but, what you're saying is that like I actually have to care about. Oh, like I don't even really give a fuck about what they think about me. Yeah, and then, but do I even care about them? Because I would just, I wanted, to, I just wanted them to like love like me, me, and then I was like, we'll deal with that. And it like felt good to feel like someone liked me, and then I would feel so terrible if they didn't like me without even being like, I don't even fucking like them. Like, and then it only took getting older and being like, I don't have time to like see if a guy's obsessed with me if I don't give a like. Not that I even don't give a shit that's too strong but I'm like I know I don't see this turning into anything so I don't need this person to be obsessed with me because I'm never going to be obsessed with them and being like all right let's but that took forever to figure out I think that's also just like an unhealed party because I I still suffer from that even uh platonically Mm -hmm. you know it'll just be people that I meet that I'm like I really want this person to like me I want them to think I'm fucking cool and Mm -hmm. chill and smart and funny and pretty and Mm -hmm. so I will like go it's fucking pathetic but it's like I really get this kind of external validation still and it's like I think a really unhealed part of uh, myself and everything that I'm like I'm just yearning for Mm -hmm. like I'm like come on like validate me which is like probably something you know it's definitely 
something that I'm I'm enacting. But it's very hard to. And here's the thing too: people are always all like, "You shouldn't be a people pleaser." You know who people when they're not kind of people pleasery? They're fucking rude assholes. Yeah, they're just like, "I kind of just do everything. I'll fucking march to the beat of my own drum." I'm like, "You are fucking rude." They don't get out of your house in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> they're impolite. They're imp- in their sandals. <laughs> yeah, in your house. They love season three of Suits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. Love it. Love it. So upset. But I I do think that like. Yeah, you people pleasing isn't inherently a bad thing. I would like people to walk away from meeting me feeling either better or I just don't want people to feel worse after interacting. Yeah, just with neutral me. even. Just yeah. and I think that's the thing. We're very. I, I don't know if this is more of just kind of like a Western society thing, but I think we really want to be impactful. That being neutral feels like we don't exist. It, it feels like a negative. It feels like a negative. And so we want to kind of go into this like razzle that we want that to give them some sort of impression and whether it be like even negative. I think some people just want to be remembered and maybe there's a, a connection between like fear of death where you're like, just, just please, I exist, right? I exist. I'm, I'm a well, Honestly, human. so many times when I have negative experiences when I've worked like customer service jobs or whatever, it's like nine times out of 10, it was, I used to work at the Apple store and they'd be like, a lot of times the people who are angry just want to complain and feel like someone's listening to them. Uh-huh. So just stand there, listen to them. They will run out of steam because all they want is you to just acknowledge their presence. And so often I feel like that is the case when someone's angry. I don't know. Like I obviously, I'm a comedian. So clearly I have some sort of issue with wanting people to like me, but at least in dating or in like friend things, maybe I, I'm just sort of like, not everyone's gonna like you. It just it is what it is. Like, yeah, put I've your effort into of, the yeah. I've it, let go of it. Like it took it took a while, and now I'm kind of like, not in a weird way, not in like a. It's kind of like a because I am very polite. I'm a very mm-hmm. nice person, which I think is actually surprising to a lot of people because I seem kind of like a elitist, uh, aggressive, uh, crazy person. But <laughs> I'm not. I'm really kind. And so when somebody doesn't like me, I kind of not to be this person, but I'm kind of like, well, they're wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. not like, not like to like me, but I'm like, I'm polite. Like, at least you could be like, she's annoying. I get that. I'm fucking annoying. I talk too much and I, my voice is too loud. I, I understand that. But if you're like, I fundamentally don't like this person, I'm like, but I'm, I'm like nice. I'm like polite. Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? That like, I can understand I'm not your cup of tea, but like, if you don't like me, then I'm like, hmm. I just feel like I'm, I don't know. Or just like to actively, I stopped actively hating people a long time unless it's like sometimes some people i'll like hate briefly but if someone really doesn't like someone i'm i'm sort of like we're not in elementary school well it's like the thing of like you can't really dislike somebody you can't really hate somebody unless at some point they disappointed you or you admired them or you loved them you had some sort of standard of who they are and that's why you know because there's no most of the time I see fucking fools on the street I'm like I I literally don't give a shit I have no feeling I have no feeling towards this person so when somebody's like I fucking hate her because she does blah 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 blah, and you're like you are obsessed with this person you're obsessed with it it's like it's a type of thing where it's like the opposite of love isn't hate it's like indifferent yeah Yeah. and And I'm indifferent to a lot of people different to most people I barely Really hate anyone. I'm like, how, how do you have the energy? Exactly to, ha- to hate somebody. I really, I really don't. Unless like somebody, I think it really comes with like disappointment. If like if somebody really disappointed you, that was like a friend, and then that can kind of leave a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah. But even then, you know, I at least have the wherewithal to be like, I just, yeah, they, I, I, they hurt me, and that's actually why I'm feeling yeah, hateful. It, you know, yeah, but it, it's because of something that happened. It's not just their general like, yeah, energy that yeah, you exactly. hate because it does. You there's always a type of person, and maybe not to like impart like like woman on it to be like I hate that girl but like to be like really elementary about things where it's like somebody who just like acts in a certain way they're just like I just cannot stand everything that they do the way that they talk the way that they like treat people the way that they do this and you're like like you care that much about this person it has to be like a form of obsession or like like immaturity right I think it's mostly obsession because you you've invested a lot of energy and time into thinking about that person to this ted talk that you just gave about this yeah person. yeah it's fucking crazy man um okay well i do think we have to wrap because we're almost mm. uh almost time but i always like to ask my guests mm. uh i don't i need to stop doing this <laughs> for, I, every time i record a podcast i go i need to stop doing this voice and i can't <laughs> stop doing it um <laughs> i like to ask my guests uh if there's any questions you have either for me or just in general about uh, the mind of whoever you're attracted to, 
Well, I think John wants to go first. What? <laughs> no. Me? Wait, what? About the mind of the person you're attracting. No, like of like sometimes I'm like, I'm like, do you ever just are like, why do men do this? Or like, you know, I noticed this and I really like don't understand it. So, you know, we get all these questions from uh, our listeners and I always like to say, do you have any questions about, I don't know, do you have any questions about like, you're like, you know, in like, you know, when I date like certain guys, they do this and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Or whatever. You can also say, I have no fucking questions and we can be done. Okay, I'm trying to think about like the types of posing questions that I would have and- Or a gripe, you know, you're like, you know what really grinds my gears? It's, you fucking- Hey, you know what grinds my gears? Actually, the the one thing that like always sticks with me is the type of, like I went on a date with the person that I really, like I enjoy like a lot or whatever and then it was just like terrible kisser. Oh, oh. so sad. And I was like, I've like, Wait, I remember, is this try, who I, we yeah, talked about this? Okay. I've tried multiple times in like being like, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try to skip as much of the kissing and like go right towards <laughs> like anything else. <laughs> have and you it, said something verbally? I have not. I'm that's not way you. too polite. And how do I? That's how not polite. I, how do I? Okay, so I had an experience with a very bad kisser and it was a guy that I really liked and he would just like, it's like his face would just smash into mine. And so I'd be like, you're hurting Ooh. my mouth. Like, I'm like, so. Your, like, lip is bleeding. <laughs> no, no, like, literally his teeth were fucked up in a way that I find attractive. Like, he had really janky teeth. And so I literally, one time he kissed me so hard that I started bleeding. And I was like, this has got to stop. So I was like, hey, whenever you kiss me, it's like, it's a little too much, too fast. And it's, it's intense mm -hmm. and he's like oh okay i'm like let's just like keep it really slow because it's it's just coming too much at me and it's not turning me on yeah. it's and i think it, like you don't have to be you can say it in a way where it's like hey like um i'm kind of more of a slow kisser could we try something i've said being like slow down and like that is as much as i was like Proud of you. Pat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. went in the bathroom and was like, oh, I did it. I did it. <laughs> I like tweeted, I did it. And, like I uh, was like, I was like, slow down. And then it was like, sort of for a second. But then it's just like, and I'm like, Jesus. But also like, you're not being specific enough. I think yeah. you got to even like, it's like sitting someone down and being like, yeah. hey, like I really like you. Um, sometimes when we kiss, uh, it goes into this like way where it's just a little too much for me. I want to kill myself. <laughs> send them like a, kiss. a YouTube video of like how to kiss and be like, oh my God, LOL, have you oh, seen this? The way Oops, how? I accidentally sent this to you, <laughs> lol. When you kiss me, it makes me feel like you're committing a terror, an act of terrorism <laughs> on my body. Uh, my body and like uh, WikiHow article, how to kiss, being like, this is a great read. <laughs> start a book club, start with this. Yeah, I think that you just need to say something yeah. and, and make it like fun and make it almost like an interactive Thing where it's like, hey, like we can do this kind of, yeah, do like, kind of like with the like tire, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why don't we both decide? Yeah. We should learn how to kiss. To not right? be bad. Yeah. <laughs> we should be like, I'm so bad at kissing, and you are too. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you say. We're yeah, both or you so could, bad you at could kissing. E you could even be like, like, I'm trying to, like, even though it's bullshit and a lie, be like, I'm trying to get like better at like kissing or more adventurous or like whatever, or like, and what you're doing is just basically kissing 101, but like that you're just sort of like, Let's try this, or mm -hmm. have you ever, I don't know. But I just, I don't think it could go that poorly, because then if it goes, it's either like he's going to be uh, a little bit like, oh, that's weird, whatever. Uh, I assume that's his voice. Um, exactly. Or, you know, yeah. Uh, it's he's, actually crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> he was same. here right now. Um, I'm like, what was that? I was possessed <laughs> by him. Uh, yeah, I think that, I don't think it would go wrong. I don't think it would go wrong. And well, for you in your situation, when you actually did sit this person down, were you like, was it better because of it? Yes, was it like he actually the, got significantly, significantly better. And it was crazy where I was like, oh wow, was you being a bad kiss or a fucking choice the whole goddamn time? Were my they thing just is, psycho? My thing is, is it's not my fucking job. It's <laughs> like you had dated you like so many person, other people, exactly. If you like the person, it's not that it's not your job. If you like the person, then it's your, duty to yourself mm. to communicate your needs. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then it's like, how have you gone to relationships and not managed? Because then you go like, am I crazy and other people have liked this? And okay. much like the tire on the bed, I was like, no, no, I'm not crazy. <laughs> this is this is weird. This is okay, weird I, to do. I will say this. I think that kissing is also subjective. And I think that there's mm. no such thing as bad kissers. There's only incompatible kissers. There well, we do I have a kisser for you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's gonna blow you up. Yeah. After that, I'm out. Um, no, I've had like dark tongue kissing 
that's oh yeah, like lizard. T- where you're like, what? A, whoa, <laughs> yo, slow down, Komodo dragon. <laughs> or for a half second, you're like, what is that? Oh, their tongue. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, why is it so hard? Yeah. Yeah. Why like, they, like, when they put a cocktail weenie in there, <laughs> yeah. start shoving it. Guy like cook tongued me, so like he would kiss like this. He'd be like, mm, mm, like that. Ooh. It was the weird. I was. It was very bizarre. Acts of terrorism. I know. Yeah. Uh, I like Logan, do you have any questions? I actually did think of one in our, uh, just we talked about both being in relationships for a while, but this can be universal regardless of relationship. When on the internet, when someone either comments on something or DMs you and not in a non-threatening way, but a clearly it's provocative way. Yeah. Or like they always like videos of your, like I'm always like, I'm not rushing to send screenshots. I never am like showing my boyfriend, but any sort of DM or communication with someone who, Wants to seems to be trying to hit on you when you're dating someone, but you don't want to be like, I have a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you deal with those interactions? I just don't. I don't even. Yeah. I don't even respond. I've. I don't yeah. respond to anything. Um. And I'll notice sometimes I'll be like, oh, this person's a fan, mm-hmm. and then I'll be like, cool, like thanks, and then I'll notice, and then they'll turn it into th- and then they'll that, turn that'll it into happen. Sexual, and then I'm Here's like, my Ugh. cocktail weenie. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta put the kibosh on this. I usually just don't respond. And there's some guys, I don't know what the fuck this is. They just like to. I mean, there's men that have had a one sided conversation with themselves for like two years. Yeah, where they just are liking and responding to like every story. Yes. or it's more like if someone will just like, they'll, like I'll be going through. And just like, and also know that I'm not obsessed with social media. This all sounds icky, but like, I'll be like liking comments on a thing just because like you're supposed to and whatever. And I'll hit one that's like, not like incredibly obscene or gross, but I'm like, do I not like this to prove it? Do you know what I mean? Like I'll sometimes as a rule, just like all of them. I kind of like like all of them, even if they're like saying something like kind of like crush worthy because I feel like if it's on a public forum it's usually not yeah. so yeah. crazy I mean I've had guys literally saying like like I want to swallow your farts and fucking <laughs> jerk off on your fucking eyeballs and like, like okay <laughs> yeah and then you're like, like John stop big, writing that on my page like, you're a fan of my comedy <laughs> <laughs> people just think I'm really funny yeah. which is also it's like most like the DMs mostly I, do, I let them all go but I guess it's more the thing where like yeah it's fine if other people are seeing it it's public facing but it's like a thing where i sit there with my thumb hovering over it because i'm like i don't want to like this and i also don't want like my boyfriend to see that i like this but i also don't care enough to start a thing don't with say this, anything which and i never i i'm this is nice because it's reinforcing behavior. i was like i just don't do anything just don't do is anything. that what is normal for other I think that's normal. I think it's better to do that than to be like, hey, bucko, I got a boyfriend. Because then it's mm-hmm. like, then you're more invested into like, it's, it's like, okay, like he, exactly. It gives him, he might be like, I know, I don't care. It's like false hope. If you replied, I'd be like, I have a boyfriend. Because that alludes to being like, I acknowledge that you want to fuck me and I have to yeah. say no because the, of this specific thing. Yes. Yeah. And it's you're like, saying, I'm not interested. It's at like, all. this is the only thing that was a deal breaker. And if he had, listen to your podcast you would know that not one single thing can be a deal breaker mm-hmm. there you go yeah there you, go. you just don't like them as a but person. my friend had that recently he was like like had this sort of like you know flirting re- relationship for a little bit and then he just the guy just like went away for months and it was like he still watches my stories but it like never replied to a text message or like an Instagram, like anything. And then he was like, oh, I was in a, a rela- I like a, like just got out of like a relationship thing. And it was like, oh, he just like, like you said, you were like, you're in a relationship. You just like stop all you like, stop. all yeah. like the Instagram. Like if somebody's like replying and also the type of thing, it's like most of the time the people who are saying that, what are you going to do? Be like, LOL, that's so funny. And it's like, it's like they're in their court. What are they going to do? Like try to close the deal with you? And yeah. like, most well, of the time they're just doing it just out of like boredom. And it's also the, like the thing that, you guys said of like, I guess people pleasing is too strong. But it's like if someone is cares enough to have looked at anything I put on the internet because I'm not like a famous, crazy, successful person, there is part of me that's like, oh, like that's nice of them. I I feel beholden to like that I should do some sort of like, and then I'll be like, no, no I'm not going to no. do anything. You know, they're just a fan, and that's yeah. fine. And that's like they're being supportive in the way that they know how to be supportive, and it doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't require reciprocity. Yeah, like that's like what. I don't know. Um, okay, and with that, we will wrap. Guys, thank you for coming on. Uh, do you have anything to plug besides uh, Will It Soda stream? <laughs> Soda um, Will It Soda stream. It, no, it's Will It Soda stream. I okay. I do want to say that we 
It's been a while since we posted one. Maybe we got one in the works. We have one <laughs> sitting on our dating room table right now. Yeah. Um, that's been there for months. Um, I mean, uh, well, where can they follow you? On Instagram, I am places I took a shit this year. <laughs> uh, and then TikTok, I'm places I took a shit again because <laughs> my original account got banned. Um, and I don't really use Twitter, but it's at a dirty guns. So <laughs> <just> all... <laughs> and John, um, I you can follow me on Instagram at Meryl Streep actor. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the type of thing where it's like I've had people be like, you have to like switch it to your name. You have to be yeah. like, don't. Very... I'm Pizza Party sixty nine. Your Pizza Party yeah, sixty nine. Yeah, you can't give that up. And it's like the type of thing where it's like I have people who are like you have to like brand it correctly. And I'm like, yeah, Meryl Streep actor. Yeah, small character actress Meryl Streep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I released a series, a uh, five part series. Of of comedy sketches recently and they're very very funny you and watch them and look forward to um maybe our last soda stream <laughs> <laughs> yeah if it goes the way we think it's gonna go we will, <laughs> we're going we're going to die doing it wow, so yeah, it's gonna explode it's gonna be fucking like uh just like the well it's soda Manhattan stream. project yeah an ied <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for tuning in everybody um and uh, i love you guys so much and um good night that's right. Good night. Even if you're listening to this, happening. Sweet dreams. Okay. Bye. Oh. oh.